All right, guys, welcome to episode 99 of the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with co-host Guy. How are you, pal? I like I've dropped the, the producer bit because we've got big news on that, haven't we? I think the big news that people suspected that you'd been fired. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if that was after the Peter Finch episode, it would have had some legs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, recently we've put a uh, post out about recruiting for a, a real producer. Yes. Because kind of you got that name indirectly just because i didn't really know what to call you at the time yeah and now because the podcast is growing so enormously thanks to everybody that listens and thanks for your kind of obvious input guy we have decided to uh to go all out and get a proper producer who will work exclusively on the podcast to put not only a bit of a structure together arrange guests also edit the content which matt's been doing at the moment but matt's been killing facebook so we need him to allow to do facebook so we're going to bring on somebody new well, it's worth mentioning it on this podcast because Matt was a listener before we employed him. He was. Or you employed him, should I say. Um, so this next person, whoever that might be, Matt will be listening now. So someone that's got a skill set of editing is essential, isn't it? Yeah, audio, editing, um, and just a, a real knack for content Yes, would be ideal. We've had, we put the post out on Thursday, I've had a ridiculous amount of applications. There's a lot. I've had a look on the email. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah. So if you have... Already put your submission in. Good luck. Hopefully we might meet you or in- interview you. But if not, get it in there and we will have a new producer very soon. Yes. Um, I've had a busy week. Well, you have had a busy week <laughs> and I've literally, you, you walked in probably five minutes ago. We've not really said much to each other because I purposely wanted to ask you anything about your weekend because I know this weekend you went on a little bit of a trip with some mates. I did. I went on a boys trip. And I feel like there's more to it than just golf. So do do tell well, it, it was a really good one, actually. One of the best boys trips I've ever been on. So I've got a WhatsApp group with a, a few friends, and a lot of them I met from when I was at Mia. So a lot of them were either like members there or friends of members, etc. cetera. Or, Your Beasleys, et cetera. Or pretty good players. So John Beasley plays off now plus six. Oh, my which is God. ridiculous with the new handicap system. Um, and his brother and loads of other, other lads. So there were seven of us in total. Now, really sadly, um, I think it was three years ago now, one of... The other friends as well in the group, so it was kind of eight us originally, um, got a brain tumour. He's called Johnny Pierce, and he actually ended up losing his life. It was really sad because he was a fellow PJ professional, and he was in his kind of, you know, mid-30s. Little boy, wife, and kind oh, of terrible. left left the earth far too soon. So we set up a group to decide to go and play somewhere. One that, like, we wanted to go and play somewhere. And we thought about all these different foreign countries, et cetera, et cetera. And it kind of, nothing really happened. He had a golf day every year, which is like a massive charity golf day. And they raised absolutely shed loads of money. And I've, I've donated some prizes to that in the past, which has been great and managed to attend them as well. But we've not, not had this kind of lads trip. So the last time we were at JCB, I got sp- speaking to the guys and said, is there any chance in October we could maybe come and get two rounds of golf or two tea times, should I say, like seven of us, or eight of us, maybe might come down and play. And anyway, they said, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you. So we went and played JCB. Nice. First of October. So it was, it was kind of a, it was like almost, it was, it was John Beasley's 40 ce- 40th celebration. It was kind of in memory of Johnny Pierce, our really good friend. And also Ben Beasley's brother's birthday next week. So it was kind of a lot of things going on. In terms of handicaps then, what's the other Beasley off? Uh, I think, other bees are maybe off about seven. Okay, so where do you, were you the second best player there? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was the second best. <laughs> so what was really funny, so we hired the house on the side of the 18th. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Is like, it as nice inside as it looks outside? It's unbelievable. I actually didn't take enough pictures and videos, to be honest with you. It was spectacular. Uh, slept, um, well, seven of us, we all stayed there. Um I'm trying to think how I can kind of put all this story together. All right, so just start from the trip down. Did you go on your own or did you go in comp? Like, no, you... so we all met at Mia. Right. And um, I took a, a pal of mine, a pa- pal of the group called Mike came in with me because we wanted to come home earlier on Sunday. Okay. The other lads kind of went down separately and there were seven of us that went down and we drove straight down to JCB. This was Friday. Friday morning. Right. 7.30, I think we met. Oh my God. We were there for nine had an 11 o'clock tea off. What time was the first pint drunk? Um, was anyone cracking one open then no, that we, time? No, we bought beers on the trip down for the buggies, but we didn't drink them before we went and played. So we got down there, had a bit of breakfast. Um, I mean, obviously you've been to JCB before. Yep. It was the busiest I've ever seen it. 
like comfortably. Really? And it's still not that busy, yeah. obviously, in the grand scheme of things. But it, it was a really nice atmosphere. And the weather all week, we've been checking it religiously. The weather has been a, a horrendous. Mm -hmm. The forecast was horrendous for Friday, okay, the day we were playing. Driving down there, suddenly we're thinking, this actually looks okay. Like, we might get away with this. And it was quite warm, and it was, you know, and we all went down with waterproofs, umbrellas, like, all warm clothing. And at kind of about half ten, when we were hitting balls on the driving range and warming up, it was like, oh, my God, like the sun's coming out. That's so it was, it was an unbelievable day for weather. Like, we, we got away with it. It was ridiculous how good it was, because everything in the build-up was horrendous. And the Saturday, the day after, was atrocious. So the you Friday, the we found a day. Hopefully, Johnny Pierce was looking down on us on that, on yeah. that day. So some some of the lads have been there before, but not all of them. So again, they were quite giddy and quite excited. They had spent a fortune in the pro shop with all the JCV really? merchandise and stuff. Um, and again, we got treated like royalty. Had breakfast, went to hit balls on the driving range. It was a little bit of drizzle then. So we actually went in those indoor bays. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, like yeah. three or four indoor bays, yeah. but still Pro V1 pyramids. It's and like, isn't it? And again, like, we're like, oh my God, imagine, imagine if you played here every week and imagine if this is where you practiced. And uh, with striping balls, having a chat, checking out each other's clubs. And like I say, quite a lot of my fans of the channel as well. So they, they, a lot of them are like asking me, what clubs you've got in the bag now? Like, what are you using in this, that and the other? And uh, they're hitting some of my clubs and I'm hitting some of their clubs. And it's just proper, like that's what you used to do as a kid growing up, really. Yeah. I remember them. It kind of reminded me of that. So we had about 45 minutes left before we teed off and um, we went on the chipping green. Okay. Now, my chipping has not been the best in the world. It's not bad on a chipping green though when you've... Mm, so, so. But seven people around. Yeah. Like, all my mates around. So, uh. <laughs> so I went off in a little quiet corner and just found something. Really? Honestly. I started chipping like, I was like, this is... A little belt buckle turn or what, what was this? Is this is a feeling or... Yeah, a little, little shut going back. I think my right knee trying to touch my left knee gets my hips turning. Okay. Makes That's sense. all I was thinking. Yeah. So hitting these little nippers off the tight turf and the greens were a little bit wet, but fast. Like taking still, it. Like it was getting taken. <laughs> like still 11 degree, 11 um, on the stint meter. So it was super wow. fast still, but receptive. And I was like flicking them in and one of the lads saw me like chipping and it was like, I'm, I'm, this is class. So then John plus six mate yeah. and another one of the lads Mike who I think maybe plays off about six decides to have a little chipping comp mm -hmm. so I thought, okay let's, let's test myself under these situations this is going one of two ways this story um it didn't go well <laughs> you lost all your pocket money um no I, I played a couple of nice shots but overall it there were still weaknesses in my chipping area and that shows when you put yourself under that like little bit of competitive oh, 100%. Edge. and that's kind of why I wanted to do it if I'm honest with you so anyway Went on the putting green, having these mad putting comps and everything. Um, so it's like, that's funny how, like you said, your mate's turning 40, you get to a golf course, you just become like kids again, don't you? Having a big putting comp. You bet you did the one where you go to the longest hole away. That's what and, we started with. Yeah, exactly. Um, so again, <laughs> we, we just, we're just just loving life and just thinking, like, we're looking at the weather, thinking this is amazing. We've got all the buggies lined up. The buggies are filled with booze. Um, what was your beer of choice, by the way? I weirdly, I wanted, I wanted Estrella. Okay. But they didn't have it in the shop. We went to this like little shop around the corner so i had to get like a case of amstel oh okay which is a random one but it was cold and it would be so um, did you do something with a lad in this situation or would you just stay true no, to yourself he, these are quite like these are quite posh lads oh okay like i've got a few groups of mates i've got my my <laughs> mates from like home home right. we'd have been stellas like i would have, a bit more and stuff. i would have had to tell them to behave <laughs> yeah. like these lads i don't have to tell them to That's behave nice. like they're they're a bit older i think i would was maybe the youngest in the party at 35. Yeah. So they're all a bit more mature. They've all got decent jobs. They're all driving nice cars. Like, it was a nice, like, atmosphere. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel like I needed to worry about these lot. So we throw the balls up on the... on. The, we got some nice pictures outside the clubhouse. Uh, John, the head pro, took some pictures and stuff. It was really nice. Then we took the golf balls up into groups. Mm -hmm. So there were seven of us. So there was going to be a four and a three. I didn't mind which one I was in. I always feel like with that, I'd rather be in the four. I don't know why. It just feels better, the four than the three. Yeah, I, I, I actually end up in the three. So we went down to the first tee in convoy, all in buggies, because it's quite a drive, do you yeah, remember? From, so all in, all in the yellow JCB, and we're driving past the house. We hadn't checked in the house at this point, and not many of them had seen the house, even if they played the golf course before, they just might not have yeah, noticed it. Yeah. It's so, obvious, but it's not obvious, isn't it? It's weird. So as we're driving past, I'm there pointing at the house, going, look, lads, that's where we're staying tonight, and that's what we're doing. And um, 
So there's a bit of a running joke. Two two people in the house had to share rooms. Right. Because there was, I think it sleeps eight, but two are twin rooms. Right. So because there were only seven of us, two had to be twins. Yeah. So we had a bit of a running joke, like worst two scores we're going to have to share. That's quite a good incentive. I honestly was like, well, that's me. I, I can't imagine off, uh, let's be honest. We've played not, off scratch. I've not, yeah, I've, not, I've played off scratch. I've not played that golf course great so far. Like, even if I shoot 10 over, let's say, which yeah. has still been my best score at JCB, that's only 26 points. Yeah. We're playing Stableford. That's only 26 points. I'm going to get battered. Like, I, I might as well just say, yeah, stick me in that room now. So I'll be honest, I wasn't ridiculously confident. So um, we all went down in convoy, and me, me and the, the three that said, go on, use a four, you go off first. A little bit less pressure on the tee. You guys go off first. That makes sense, though, the three. It made no sense. Right. Like, literally no sense at all. Yeah, you're going to be waiting. But we didn't want to go first. <laughs> right, fair dues. So Daunting first tee shot. Well, we that. teed off the blacks on the first. So right where it, we... Just because it's a yeah. proper tee shot, isn't it? Yeah. Into wind, right? Ouch. That hole is so different into Did wind. Did you not reach that bunker then, in the middle? Well, the very first time I played it, do you remember I smashed driver yeah, past yeah. it? The second time I put it in the water with a three wood, but I couldn't imagine hitting three wood off that tee on Friday. It was a hundred percent driver. And you're right, I was looking at that bunker at about three hundred yards going, just hit it as hard yeah. as you want at that, it's fine. A couple of lads didn't get off to the best start. Water. Lots of lot water golf balls on the first hole. But it was nice, it was all joking. That's why we decided to play Stableford. So the four went off and off they went and John the really good player hit a perfect tee shot straight down the middle as you'd expect. So I'm standing up there, next tee off, and there then we're thinking we're getting away with the first tee nerves. No. After they've hit their second shot, they watch us tee off. Nice. Because <laughs> it, it's quiet enough we yeah, can yeah, do yeah. this. So I step up first thinking, oh, I'm not really sure about this. Oh, it's fitting to wind. Didn't have great memories on the last time I played this hole. All the lads, it's just, you know, it's the banter lot as well. And even <laughs> though it wasn't on camera, yeah. it feels like it's it was more people there, weirdly. Um, I'll come back to the camera thing in a minute. I absolutely strike one off the first tee. Nice. Like I picked the tee peg up while the ball was still 10% in the flight. I just knew it was nailed straight at the bunker. Nowhere near it because it was into wind, but p- perfect position. The other lads kind of teed off. One of them didn't do particularly well. But they got asking me, like, what's it like playing without cameras? And it's weird because I, I really, really don't play that often without no. cameras. And often I feel guilty if I play a golf course without cameras. So if you hit a good shot or something or something happened, that would have been a good video. Yeah, I just, I, but I also feel guilty that I'm not taking the audience with me. I don't know what it is. I've, I've had a few experiences when I've, when I've been playing somewhere and thought, I should really have my cameras here. Mm. But in this sense, because we've done a couple of videos already at JCB, I didn't feel that bad. Yeah, you're not going to pull a camera out with all your mates for someone's 40th birthday. Well, I'm not going to do that. And they're not that bothered about that. But also, I didn't feel guilty guilty because we've already done videos there yeah you get what I mean? yeah if you'd never played there before that's what i mean it's a 17th hole the par three you'd be exactly. thinking imagine this on camera um and that's why i didn't really post anything on social media because everyone's kind of seen it and yeah this that and the other so um start off and i won't bore you with every single shot drive a four iron into the first hole wow. it was long stuck it pin high 12 foot just missed for birdie that'd be like, a perfect start whoa hello <laughs> again i won't go into every hole but i'll just go into these first few Second hole, big driver left, big mm. snap up. Oh, God, here we go. Found it in a pretty nice line in the rough. Pin was back left. Yeah. Hit this 9 iron to about 10 foot. Rolled it in. Oh, my days. Birdie. One under through two. Shields. I've never made a birdie at JCB. I didn't, oh my I didn't days, make no. one birdie in the first two rounds at JCB. So, second hole, I made birdie. Okay. Perfect. Third hole, the par five. Yeah. Hole, the monster. Birdie. So, you're two under through three? Two under through three holes. You're but. thinking, got your own room tonight. <laughs> I'm thinking, I've got my own room tonight. This is it. Lads on tour. But also I was thinking, I'm, I'm putting a good round together. I finally feel like I'm understanding JCB. Next hole, make double bogey. Standard. Back to level par. But either way, I kind of won't bore you with things. I made seven birdies. Seven birdies? Oh my God. I nearly had two holding ones. I put it to about a foot on the ninth, the Which par three down the hill. Um, the beautiful yes of course yeah yeah i put it to about even closer on the 14th hole which the par three kind of after the long par five yeah the long yeah and knocked it on in two on that par five. Oh my days i had three birdies in a row so after the turn so after nine i was two over par right even after making 
three birdies. Tens the par five coming back. <laughs> yeah, oh. bogeyed that annoyingly. Even I nearly I was on for three, and then eleven Eleven's double nice bogeyed. Own. That's a tough hole. That little double bogeyed eleven. One. Yeah. Perfect middle of fairway, thinned it straight through the back. My, my full wedge game was horrendous. Every time I made double, I made three doubles. Every time I was less than 100 yards away from the green. Not good. So what did you shoot then? So then I birded 12, yeah, 13, did you drive on 12? 14. Uh, no, because it was into wind. Oh, right. It was like a bit weird. Made birdie on 12, 13, 14, three yeah. on the bounce. Parred the fifteenth, which honestly yeah, it's was, tough old. and it was into wind, yeah. and the pin was right at the back Long. again. Bounce have been like almost a free. That was like a bird stupid. basically. Um, parred sixteen, tough old. so I was still I was one over par at this point. Oh my word, one over par on the seventeenth hole. Which is for listeners that haven't watched the videos, seventeen is off. Did you go off blacks on this yeah. one? Two fifty, is it? It was two fifty. Yeah. Wind water par hard three off the right. Oh my days! You've got really water hard. all around the green. It's it's probably the hardest holes in golf. Literally solid. Five iron. That sounds like a big, like a long hit to get out there. In the water, over the back. Over the, what? So I took a drop, um, got up and down. So that was a full. Bogey. And then the last hole, so I'm two over par playing the last hole. My word. Okay. Don't believe it, it wasn't on camera. I know. Took a tight line down the left-hand side of, yeah. of 18. Perfect position. Literally couldn't have placed any better. 210 yards left oh into the green. Word. It was a monster, because again, it was into wind. All the lads on the 18th hole watching. Mm -hmm. Oh god, here we go. One over, uh, two over at this point. I think I'm doing all right here. I feel like what like with the story. I've got no idea what's coming next. You've either stiffed it and tapped it in, or you've like shanked it. I block it miles right <laughs> towards them, but I know it's short enough that I, I didn't need to worry. So yeah, I knocked it miles right. I had a thirty yard pitch in front of everyone. Oh, I think that's the worst <laughs> golf shot for you, isn't it? <laughs> Literally the worst. That takes me the road hole <laughs> that time. So they're all saying to me, "What are you doing, Rick? What's this?" Because they've all got the scores. Rick's got his putter out at this point. <laughs> The two lads I'm playing with aren't in it. Yeah. And we're playing, we're playing for a prize, by the way. Oh, right. It's not just worse. We're playing for a prize. So I'm stood there thinking, oh, my God. And they're all saying, well, how are you doing, Rick? How are you doing? I'm saying, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. But don't forget, John Beasley's there. But I know John Beasley's not shot four under no, out there. It's, yeah, it's just yeah, not. It's happening. But there's a couple of, again, handy players who are off like eight, nine, Who could have had lights out three or four over. Yeah. So I'm walking up there and they're all going, go on, what, what's your score? Have, have you beat such a thing? I'm like, well, yeah, I might have done. Have you beat such a thing? Is it better than this? Is it better than 30 points? Is it better than 32 points? I'm thinking, it's, it's close, yeah. So I'm thinking, I might be in I might be in here. Right. Little 30-yard chip into the green. Okay, everyone's watching. I'm thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> Slightly fluffy lie, which helped. If it was on a tight lie, I'd have been panicking. I thought, come on, Rick, just trust it. Get your right knee to your left knee yeah. and play a golf shot. Right? <laughs> Played a lovely little delicate little flick. It came off the bat and I was like, holy crap. By the way, I'd had about five beers by this point. That's the answer, as always. <laughs> I'd had, I'd had, I was absolutely squiffy. I was looking down at the ball, seeing two golf balls, <laughs> thinking I had a sausage roll at the half. <laughs> that was class. But, um, you know, I was, I'd had a few drinks at this point. Like, we're having a great time. Yeah. The amount of times I was stood there with four riding into a par four, thinking, I don't know if I'm going to hit this golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly playing these worldly golf shots. So I pitched it in there to about maybe 10 foot, 12 foot, which was pretty good where the pin was. And I thought, I really want to hold this for par. Let's finish with a par mm. on the last hole because I think I've definitely won it if I make par. Yeah. I can't, but I'm thinking, everyone's watching. It's like, oh. So I, I just missed it. It was a good putt. Yeah. Can't complain. Good putt, knocked it in for bogey, right? So I'm three over. So that's 33 stable for points. 33 stable for points. Okay. Three over, walking off thinking, I've, sh I've just shot 75. Oh. I've shot, but I'm all right with that. Yeah. I've just shot 75 at JCB. I feel like I've that is like it. a level par at most golf courses, easily, isn't it? The way I hit the ball and the way I chipped and pitched and putted. We, but think about I had so many double bogeys. I had three yeah. double bogeys and seven birdies. Crazy. So um, I'm walking off and I'm like, yeah, I've, I've 33 points. And they go, you've won. And I went, shut up. They went, yeah, yeah, nobody's beat you. I'm like, what? I'm thinking, I'm not only not sharing, I'm freaking won. I mean, it's only a seven-day, a seven-man comp, but... Still? Oh, is this what you've got with you? But... So if you're listening to the podcast, it might be worth flicking over to the video version, because Rick's got something with it. Oh, my days, he's got a trophy. So... Is that the claret jug? It's a mini claret jug. We made a little mini claret jug. That's sick. The JP trophy. That is In sick. memory of our good friend, Johnny Pierce. 
and I win the very first one. That is very impressive. So today I found a engraver who is in just around the corner from us. Yeah. I'm going to get it engraved and it is going to take pride and place oh, brilliant. on our shelf for here in the podcast. I'll have to take down my my putting runner up. What's that other plaque thing that, that, that I've not, Oh that little thing. What's that one? I've actually never recognised that before. So there's another plaque. Let me get it. I've never seen that. Is this new? Yeah. So Rick's going off his seat now to get another plaque, another one of his trophies. Maybe take the YouTube one down. I'm about to take second place club championship. <laughs> <laughs> second place junior. Who tried the hardest? Heart <laughs> common. So yeah, I might, have, I might have to take. I might have to take one of my trophies down. To that make, is a cool little. That's room. literally like a claret jug, isn't it? So if we wanted some clickbait for the uh, for the video, everybody. Rick, oh yeah, there we go. I said about the title. Yeah. Rick Shields wins major inaugural. Ign- oh, you've got off me out of it. Inaugural. Inaugural <laughs> JP trophy. Oh yeah, that well that is definitely the title of this video. <laughs> What's the other award then? So this came out of the blue. So this is from it's the got so many awards. This is from the PGA, okay. from the Professionals Golfers Association, and it's the Toby Sunderland Award. Okay. Okay. This is for um what's the right word? It, it's basically a recognition for charitable work. Ah, is that for the mind walks? Yes. Very so, good. Um, believe it or not, though, this wasn't. This is second place. <laughs> um, no, so, that's funny. <laughs> to be honest, the guy who got first place, after trying to find his name and, and mention it next time, he did something. So I try and find it. Far superior than remember, me. Remember what it was called. So again? it's the Toby Sunderland Award for the for the North England and Wales. So I didn't win it, but the guy who won it definitely deserves winning it. Oh, it only goes on PJ. It only goes up to 2018. The Let me see if I can find the email. Um, it's not very good. Toby Sunderland. So basically, I obviously got second place, which was lovely. But the guy who won it literally did like 100 marathons or something stupid. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like well, yeah. What I did in compa- comparison... But it was still really nice. Yeah, but we got a nice little trophy. In fairness, though, what we always said with your thing is what you were doing, obviously you did four-mile walk with your golf clubs on every day. It wasn't about, like, how hard that was to do. No. It was more the fact you using your platform to speak to so many people. That was why what you did was impressive. I can't find the uh, email I got off him now. We'll have to find it. And um, yeah, so trophy, well done. trophies so it's galore. A vic- a victorious weekend. Um, I didn't do very good at go-karting. Well, I forget that. Where did you come? Uh, fifth. Yes. Fine. So, that. yeah. So after, after we, oh, by the way then. So then that night, so we, we went back to the clubhouse, did a little presentation. Yeah. Did a little speech. Um, all had steaks, all had beers, had champagne. Like it was, it was mint. Absolutely awesome. Um, I took my swingless golf club. Oh, so that's quite cool. So all the lads were like whacking it on the range and stuff. It that's was class. Cool. Um, and then we, um, went back to the house and the JCB guys sent loads more food down, far too much food, nachos, chicken wings, wedges, all the amazing. Such a lad's trip. We had this massive table. We bought, again, loads more beer, wine, everything. We had this massive table and we stayed up till about half two playing poker. Did you win at poker? No, no I lost at poker. I went all in first hand. <laughs> <laughs> so rich shields. <laughs> I didn't have to buy back in. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't win at poker. But then we played the most stupid game at like, Two o'clock in the morning, there was three of us, me, John, and who else was playing? Sean, another one of the lads. We were playing a tenner a man, highest card. Oh and we, I reckon we played it for half an hour. Just literally putting a tenner in each, and a dealer would just go, one, one, one. And whoever had the highest card won the pot. Oh, my God. <laughs> but luckily, I won, I won at that. So anyway, yeah. Did you get a chance this weekend? Did they like footy, the lads? Did they like football? They do like Did football. you get a chance to flex a bit on your current knowledge, or not really? Well, this, is, this is how bad it is now. And how much I'm addicted. Well, first off, I was talking a lot about the, the Champions League game I went to last week. Yeah, of course. We've not even talked about that yet. Um, I went to the Champions League and sat in a box. And Dennis Irwin, apparently, is a big fan of the channel. And Andy Ritchie. So Andy Ritchie, who used to play for United back in the 70s, I believe. And Dennis Irwin, football icon. Uh, had a little chat with him and they were apparently big fans. he's in the clubhouse. Who knows? Potentially. Who knows? One foot in. So that was quite cool. Um, watching Ronaldo score in fifth minute. Yep. That was cool. You've changed so much. So the go karting on Saturday was booked in Birmingham for like one o'clock, but United Everton clicked off at half half twelve. They should have known that they not to book stuff that. around football with I, you. I told this to them now. They'll yeah. know, they'll know in the future. So I bet you went around with one AirPod in listening to the. Well, it wasn't on. It wasn't on uh, Sky, so we had to like stream it. Uh, I don't know how legal that is. It's on BT Sport, I think. I don't think it 
was. We watched it on some dodgy channel. I think it was the early kickoffs on BT, but it was because I watched it. In me, fact, me and the two of the other lads sat there at the back of the like we were, we should have been in this like brief in this safety briefing for the go kart and we're there sat at the back watching the football. That is honestly that's a school where the first rule if you want to do anything social with Rick Shields is you do it around the football. <laughs> What it, what it is these days? Um, well, that was a good introduction to the podcast, Rick. I like <laughs> quite long winded. No, sorry, it's a good story. Um, so today, obviously, as you said, we're one week away from the hundredth episode. The um, hundredth episode doing a live show at the Salford Keys Theatre in Salford, just outside of Manchester. It's basically Manchester, isn't it? Salford, really. Yeah. It's but it's actually a different. It's weird, it's a different city, but it's essentially all one place. Yeah. Um, it's going to be good. Really good. We've got some good guests coming. Who we've still. We're not going to announce until the night. I don't want to announce a guest and then anybody get like stupid, like get COVID or something bad like that and not come. But we've got some good guests, all of whom I will say have been on the podcast before and yeah. done very good episodes. That should be really good. Obviously, we've sold out, which is awesome. There was 450 tickets. Yeah. Nearly 500 people are going to be watching us. So obviously, a lot of the listeners listening now won't be able to come. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people who listen in the US, etc. But for those that are coming, we can't wait to see everybody. Yeah. And for those um, listening, we are going to do an audio version of the podcast live, yes. which will go out Tuesday like normal. Yeah. We're not going to do a video one, but we might put, post the behind the scenes on this YouTube channel. There was reasons why we can't film it, knowingly due to the stage, the setup, and, and things like that. So annoyingly, if you're a, a podcast viewer and you're watching this right now, and you're like to listen to, like to watch the podcasts for one week only it's an audio only yeah. podcast but we'll, we'll, we'll do have about, something for you we'll have a little treat video but today i have got loads of correspondence from facebook okay so as we say most weeks we have a really good community on facebook it is a group called the rick shields golf show group yeah. Sixty six thousand members now so many cool things getting shared on there but it's a great place for us to go to get people to um give us our questions for us and certainly for you rick the first one I've got, and I like it. Obviously, it would be quite good for you to give an answer on it, but I like it because this guy's reply to his own question. Right, you okay. ready? So a guy called Tobias Terrell. Okay. And actually, we've not spoken about this for ages and ages, but do you remember when we first launched the podcast group? People had badges next to the name. Oh, yeah. This guy is a founding member. Right, what, what happened to those They're badges? still there, but there's that many people on there that you kind of don't... But this guy's a founder member, so that means he's been a member of the group since November of 2019, I think nice. it was. He's called Tobias Terrell. He said, how can I get my wife interested in golf, right? Yeah. So that was the question. But then a guy, I'm not going to mention, then put, why do you want to do that below? Yeah. I love Tobias' response because I hate that kind of rubbish banter. Tab- Tobias just put, because I like my wife and I'd like to spend more time with her on the golf course. I know that might seem unusual. <laughs> Yeah, I do, you know what I hate. I know I've only just recently got married, and I know it's a bit of banter. I hate that rubbish entry level middle aged crap banter where you pretend you hate your wife. Why? Yeah, it's weird. He wants it? to spend more time with his wife on the golf course and get her into the game and go and play nice golf course and have weekends away. Instead, you've got people going, "Oh, why do you do that?" It's just rubbish. Yeah. Do you subscribe to that level of banter? I don't think you do. No, no, I'm not bothered about that. It's rubbish in it. Anyway. In answer to Tobias' question, how would you get your wife or other people's wives, or husband, well, supposing this question is about a wife, but how would you get your, your wife into your golf? Partner into golf. But also as well, it doesn't necessarily say playing. I guess that's what he means, which is interested in golf. So yeah. like you, could, you might want her to watch Sunday night European, well, PJ Tour or European Tour with her. Yeah. What's the um I think it starts quick off tip? fairly kind of easily, almost like mini golf. Like even just taking on, go on a date night, go to mini golf. And even there, just kind of, Start to plant the seed about how to maybe hold it, how to stand roughly. You don't have to be too kind of dictatory on this, but just have fun and have a little competition and, you know, make it make it an enjoyable experience and then maybe tag on the next time, go to the driving range for a bit of a date night. And again, doesn't have to be too much pressure. Go at night, have a few drinks, like go to the cinema after. So it's just part of, part of the night. And again, just have it where it's very easy and it's fun and it's enjoyable. And maybe don't go on a really cold night or a windy night or try not to have anything that will put pe- other people off. Because as a hardcore golfer, we can look past the wind, the rain, the cold if you're brand new into it, you don't really want to start at that level, oh, do you? It was like when we played the old course. It was the worst weather ever. We were playing the old course. Exactly. So somebody that doesn't know anything about golf, you'd go, this is the old course, go and play. And they'd go, I don't care what course it is. This is horrible weather. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think start like that. And then, you know, it'll be interesting if, if you even start putting on TV and showing some in, like fun ways of golf. Like even showing them my so, videos. I was going to say that. Some of our videos, I think, would... Like tall Paul, yeah, yeah, tall Paul, or the young one, um, Leo, Leo, yeah, or even when I like go and caddy for like Olivia Cowan, or yeah. where I, when I had Carly Booth on the show, or things like that, where 
you know, show it's only a 10 minute little video, but it'll show people interested in golf. And I think that's how you can almost do it really. So I think that'd be a fun way. Or even like the one that I did when I played left-handed last year, like that's again, it's a fun yeah. entertaining video that, that the non golf would also really enjoy. And you'll be in, You'll be surprised, I reckon, over time, those little plants of seeds. And, and she only needs to pick up a few names of golfers that she's kind of watched on TV. She goes, oh, yeah, I remember you talking about Dustin Johnson before. He's the one with the beard, isn't he? The tall guy. Or, oh, I remember you talking about that Bryson fella. He's sitting mild on it. And I think once you start to, or obviously in the ladies' game as well, once you start tagging those names and those faces, you, you become invested straight away, personally. Yeah. So I think get, kind of start off slowly. The one thing I I would maybe avoid is going like straight out on the golf course, like, eighteen hole stroke play. Yeah, <laughs> like don't don't go buying massive expensive set of clubs, going straight out on the golf course and just expecting it to happen if it's boring or it's slow or it's cold yes. or it's wet. It's just not going to happen. I agree. Got another good question for you. Yeah. I don't think we can necessarily name the brands in question, but I think we can elaborate a little bit. So it's from Christopher Gurley, um, and he says, "Has an equipment manufacturer." ever criticised or was upset about Rick's reviews and did they let know about it? Yeah, many times. <laughs> yeah, Give us a bit more. <laughs> um, th- there's been upteen occasions where a brand has watched a review and responded and sent me an email or you an email and yeah. gone, um, you know, is there anything that we can do to to not change the almost They almost think they don't explain the equipment. It's almost like, oh yeah, but do we need to educate you more on the product? It's like, well, no, we didn't hit it very far. It doesn't yeah. matter what. You've got inside it. Like. Yeah, they, they try and justify it by saying, oh, did we not do a good enough job at explaining this product to you? Not really, no. You, you explained it great. And what we've done is taken that information and reviewed it and tested it and said it's not particularly very good or it's not this or it's not that. Or, um, But you know what's mad with that? And this is from my experience working for a golf brand is that when like we see a product, it might be a month before it comes out, right? And obviously the review comes out on the embargo date. So let's just say a product comes out on January the 1st, right? Yeah. And that's when everybody sees our video and other videos. To the consumer's mind, they might send a leak about it six weeks earlier, a month earlier, a week earlier. But in reality, most people, that's the first time they ever hear that product. But the people that work for those brands, depends on what level and when, what the job is within that brand, but at least they will have seen the product probably six months before earlier mm. obviously the r&d team will be on it for two or three years maybe so they've got so much passion and excitement and almost trust in this product that when anybody that says anything bad about it they get so upset and take it so personally of course a bit like you know if you had a baby and you think it's the best looking thing in the world and you think the name of it is perfect yeah other people will say but yeah so that's a bit of a fritter baby and don't it's like his like name. Ferret, that little baby. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't like its name or whatever. Like that's gonna hurt the parent's yeah. feeling. But oh, exactly. the difference is you wouldn't ever say that to the parent. We're kind of saying it to the parents of these brands, like or these 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 uh, products. I know, yeah. But also it's a good analogy, but if you go to if you said to people, I'm gonna show you my baby, I want an honest and impartial review, then that's a risk you're gonna take. Yeah, you exactly. might say he's an ugly baby. <laughs> yeah. So people come to us and obviously we always do and you always do impartial, unbiased reviews then that's the risk they take. And unfortunately... They want to take the rough with... You can't take the rough with the smooth. Like, there's often occasions where I've, I've sang huge amount of praises for a certain product and that's made it sell out or whatever it may be. But the same manufacturer, I could rip a product to shreds. They can't have... They can't complain when I, I review it badly and kind of celebrate well, that's exactly when I review it well. And that's what sometimes annoys me when, like, golf brands, if we do a good review on a product, they'll often, like, share the link on Twitter and say like, oh, Rick Shields has reviewed our new X, Y, Z iron. And it's like, I kind of don't blame them in a sense because it's a piece of content that essentially sings the praises of their products or why they don't want to show their following and talk about it. But then it's like, you didn't show the last three videos where we said your product wasn't any better than last year. Yeah, exactly. So then people sometimes look at that and go, oh, I've just seen that golf brand tweet Rick Shields video. Oh, is he getting paid by them now? Is it a sponsored video? It's like, well, obviously not, no. but they've not tweeted the last four times and have slagged yeah. it off. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit of a funny one, isn't it? Most brands, though take it in the correct manner yes. as constructive criticism and hopefully many brands have taken that on board and, and it's influenced the next model of a product let's say so it's one of those things they, they that's the risk they take when you're off on friday this week when you were out gallivanting yeah. i had a phone call with a golf brand which i think i said to you the other day that it's going to be a big driver and we are well you are going to get fitted for it, i think at the end of november early december 
Um, so th- therefore you've got the best product ready for the review. Apparently, and I know brands say this, but this driver from said brand, which I can't say just yet, is meant to be a game changer. I feel like they say that every year, but you're saying they're saying that every year, but this feels like... This does feel like... Because the current driver they've got is an, you know, a bit of an evolution on previous models. Oh, is my chair going down? Well, I feel like I'm shrinking. Um, anyway, I feel like my chair, I might have to move it. Um, but this next driver apparently is supposed to be unreal. All right. So I don't, I've got no idea what the technology could be, what they're going to do, but we will see. It's not our job to do that. It's their so job. next question is aimed at me a bit. So I'm going to give my output then, Rick, and I need to follow up because I think you might have some bits on top. It's from Joe. I'm going to have to move my chair one sec. It's really doing me head in. <laughs> What's it doing? That feels too high now. I felt like it was going down on me, really. Look, that's better. Um, now I'm too far away. One sec. This is rubbish if you're listening in the car, innit? You're on a 5K run getting towards the end of this podcast motivating you, and I'm just moving my chair. Uh, it's from Jordan Brody. He said, I'm going to Guy. I'm going for my first fitting next week. I trust the pro will be fitting me. That being said, what questions should he ask, and is there anything I should know? So I know we've done a lot of questions on fitting before, but typically it's about, like, a fitting's overrated, blah, blah, blah. Well, this one's actually quite a good question. He's going for a fitting, which is fine. He should do. So what should he ask? Well, I wrote a couple of notes before of things I should think he should kind of ask or have in mind, and then we'll see if you've got anything to follow up with. First one, sounds obvious, have a rough budget. We had a question a couple of weeks ago where somebody said they got fitted for tailor-made irons. So talk about brands seeing their ass about comments that we well, do you made. want to mention that or not? Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. Had a, so in two... A couple of weeks ago, we talked about... I like it. You take the lead on these things. I can't get in trouble now. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about a store and your experience is working at that store. Yes. Um, I had a phone call from one of the big chiefs from that store. There's a CEO. CEO saying that he wasn't happy with my comments. Yeah. Well, your comments. I threw you on the bus. Oh, it was, fine. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't you. It wasn't me, sir. <laughs> but that's the truth. That's what happened. So and at the end of that conversation, we said that said store has changed its tactics and they're doing did. better. Yeah. But when Guy worked for them, this is what he found. Well, that was it. We said, or I said, seven, and I've watched that video back about three times just to double check, well, triple check. I said, I think, towards the start, middle and end, I believe, and I, well, I know the store has changed because I've, I've spoke to staff in there. And um, we, we, we didn't slander them. We just said my experience from working for said retail. But actually, having said that, once that phone call was taken place, and they, that was, again, they weren't happy with it. But they didn't say take the video down because it was true. But then I thought... Well, I did talk about lawyers and Syrian and stuff, but... Yeah, but between us, we can write a decent letter. <laughs> um, how Do you think, though, this is what I thought about, should, th- th- I think said retailer now, there's a flat commission, so therefore it's not biased to any particular brand. Yeah. But actually, should commission be allowed at all? Now, I don't. this is obviously not great to listen to if you work for a retailer that makes commission in golf. But let's just say you're working at a retailer... And last year, I came for a fitting with you and I bought a set of Titleist t hundreds. okay? I then come in this year and go, Hi, Rick, um, you fitted me great last year for those irons. I want to try the new version. I know there might be much difference, but I want to see what they like, and I try them. If you know you only get a commission for selling that new set of irons, are you not going to be inclined to sell them anyway, regardless if they're not right for the actual consumer? Yeah. I, I've always said you should pay for a fitting. Yeah. I honestly and that's think... that's where the profits, correct. the commission whoever's made. You should pay for a fitting and... Not astronomical prices like Taylor made a char- a t- title to charging at that Woburn place. That's like a mad five hundred pound thing. Um, but like, if it was fifty pound for the fitter's time or the pro's time, and their job is to fit you, mm-hmm. their job is to tell you what clubs are going to best suit you in your budget. And that's what got us onto that conversation about said retail store is because the guy emailed in said he felt like he was being pressured to almost buy expensive irons. Yeah because there was never a budget explained or discussed, let's say. Where if you go with, spend £50 on the fitting, you, you maybe don't get mo- that money back, but that fitter at the end of the day says, no, the clubs you've currently got are perfect for yeah. you. Or actually, if we just put a slightly thicker grip on your clubs, you don't need to buy new clubs. They're great for you. Like I feel like then you get rid of this kind of tacky sales pitch where it's like, oh no, the new such... Irons are going to make you hit the ball 10 yards, 20 yards further. Are they, in reality? So I, I agree. I think commission should maybe be looked at differently. But I do honestly think as a fitter, you should get paid just a fee. And then that so fitter more honest and- isn't, isn't influenced by you buying clubs. You know what else you to do as well, though? <laughs> One more last thing. We might take this out if you don't want me to say it. But um, 
when I worked there, not only was there a commission structure, often the top salesman in the business of a cert- selling a certain brand would be like a holiday and the store manager would as well. So let's just say that a, a golf brand, and this used to happen from all the brands, not just any particular one, they would have a month where it's like, right, February of 2012, the person that sells the most, whatever brand, there's going to be a holiday to Dubai. And that's a store manager. So you can't tell me the store manager is going to tell all the staff, oh, make sure you sell Callaway this month or t- Titleist because another brand who's going to give the top store a holiday to Dubai. Yeah. But anyway, so... and But apparently, legally, that doesn't happen anymore. Well, I don't know on that one. Apparently it doesn't. I, well, I've never actually been told about that one. The commission's apparently definitely changed, which we said. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, have a rough budget in mind. <laughs> My it's, phone's going to be blowing up again. Well, whatever. Um, oh, that's it. Whatever. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, go and watch your notes have a rough budget yeah as I said that about three times now but there's no point trying to set a vines for 1200 quid if you've only got 700 quid to spend obviously some people might go in and think yeah, actually those ones for 100 quid more or a bit better etc but you need to have some level of rough budget even for the fitters own like kind of sanity yeah. there's nothing worse than when I used to work again in a retail store and someone says I want a new set of vines okay well how much have you got would be my first question how much do you want to spend oh I don't mind well these are the new whatever irons. 1400 quid oh no we're not spending that much it, it, but again it'd be a bit like going into a into an estate agent's and yeah. saying i want to buy a new house yeah okay have you got a budget sir uh, no that's fine well rick shields still in this house it's only 5.2 million oh yeah i'll do <laughs> well that's it like you can't just you can't just say i've not got but like everybody's got a, a but at least a rough budget you know you used to get the most on footwear weirdly because yeah. people come in and say i want a new pair of golf shoes okay well what's you know multiple i want comfort i want good level of like traction and at the time, Echo golf shoes were, like, unbelievably comfy, but they were dear. So you go, well, this new Echo shoe's 200 quid. You go, well, I'm not spending that. So not saying that people sh- should spend that, but you need to know the budget. That yeah. was the first thing I put down. Next thing I put was, know the if this is for irons in particular, know the lofts of your current clubs and take them with you. So if you're trying a new 7 iron and you're ripping it longer than your 7 iron, but actually it's a 6 iron or even a 5 iron loft, maybe try your own out against it and, and see what the difference is then. It is one launching better or not, but you've got to compare apples to apples, in yeah. my opinion. Um, also, I like, be honest with yourself. So, most people now, you know, understand that most golf brands make good equipment. But we also often, not everybody, but we often have brands that we just like for whatever reason. You might have a favourite golf that uses that brand or a memory as a child from using a certain brand. So, if you know deep down that you want, like, let's say, Mizuno or Titleist, but on the day you hit the TaylorMade quite well as well, and the guy's going, oh, you know, TaylorMade, you're hitting those good. Obviously, if it's massively outperforming, then get them, clearly. If it's very much level, but it's... Off, there's something you, oh, you should go with the brand that you what you really do want, I think. Because yeah. if you spend a lot of money on a product, you want the one that you want. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, I agree. And we all know now that no brand makes a bad club, so you can't really get a bad one. Um, also, another one I've put, this is difficult, but is it possible to try that club on the golf course? Mm. Because it makes such a difference. And also as well, it's all well and good for the average consumer going, oh, that drive you're hitting five yards longer or ten yards longer or whatever, but going onto a golf course and actually driving it past a tree you've never got it past before or clearing a lake you've never cleared, yeah. that makes a big difference. Huge. And then lastly, this isn't important for everybody, but I think something people should know, see this comment a lot, is do your own research and have a rough idea of when those brands release products at what time of year. Because, for example, Taylor made release in January, February. If you went had an amazing Sim 2 fitting on the 4th of January and then it came and you got it delivered two weeks later and then the next day the new one's announced and it's the same price... You would feel a little bit like, you but or, or even the other way of looking at it is, stay two weeks later and then buy it when the old one's discounted. Yeah. So have a rough idea of when stuff's out yeah. if you if you bothered. Some people aren't. Um, and it's a miss that you think. The, the only thing I would add on to that is I feel like a normal fitting, get invited to the bay, take your club out, whack a few of your own first. Yeah. Let, let's just say a driver for for this example because it's easier. You stood there, you're nervous, you're cold, you're not warmed up, you start whacking your driver, okay? Yeah. The fitter is taking all this data. They're taking all your good shots, all your bad shots, and just keeping that to the side. They've got that as, like, backup evidence then to go, anything we hit past this point yeah. is better than this crap yeah. that you've just hit because it because you weren't loose, you were nervous, every, everything else. Now, that's fine. Hit those tenors warm ups with your own driver, that's fine. And then start hitting other products. And then once you feel like you've got the product that suits you the best, go back and actually compare it against your driver again. Yeah. So tell the fitter to write, wipe everything, wipe all the data. Yeah. Let me do a proper head to head test between my driver that I know I can, I'm warm and ready to hit now. Yeah. Let me hit 10 and I'll tell you the shots I want taken out or don't. And I'm going to hit 10 with so true. My, the new driver. 
And again, then you can proper compare it. That's a good point. And you'll get a point there where you'll go, okay, so these there's now five yards of difference compared to maybe what you've been in, told it's 25 yards of difference because they're using those crap warm-up shots compared to your most recent shots. That makes sense. It does indeed. So that's the one thing I hate when I've been for a fitting and they say, hit your club first. So I'm like, yeah, but you're just going to take that data. You should almost say, let's take a club that's not, Remotely anything you're going to get today, but we'll just give you a warm up club. Yeah. A gener- they just make a generic warm up club. Yeah. That's like a random brand. It doesn't have yeah. a logo on it. Yeah. You warm then, up with that. Because then obviously the fitter needs to know information like club head speed and ball speed and flight and everything else. Yes, that's important, but they shouldn't be measuring then straight off distance on that Very account. True. Um, I did see one question on the Facebook group that I want to cover. Go on. Someone's asked me, am I getting the new GC? Oh, uh, that's quad? mad. That's literally one of the ones I've got down. So. I just want to clear this up. I don't know loads of information about it yet, but it's not a new GC Quad. Just for people that don't know, what is GC Quad? GC Quad is a launch monitor that in its own body, it has four cameras. Two cameras measure club head data. So things like club head speed, path, angle of attack, face position, where it strikes on the face, uh, loads of other things about the club. The other two cameras picks up all the information about the golf ball how fast it's flying, what the spin rate is, what the launch angle is, how far that ball's going to go. That unit in its own right is roughly somewhere around five fifteen thousand pounds <laughs> as a unit. Yeah. That's what I use as a, as a standalone unit. It's fifteen thousand pounds. It plugs into the software. You can put it on a simulator. You can take it everywhere. GC three isn't replacing GC quad. Okay. GC3 only has three cameras. It's like a takedown sister model. It's it's a less complicated model. Yeah. So GC Quad is very much aimed at golf pros, fitters, people who, who really deliver lessons, who wants the most information. Yeah. GC Quad is definitely going to be in a different bracket where it won't give you as much club head data. So it won't give you like things like, I can't remember what it doesn't or doesn't measure, but it doesn't give you as many complicated numbers. Yeah. But it'll give you the same ball data. So in simple terms, your one, the GC Quad, is an iPhone 13 Pro. Correct. The takedown GC3 is an iPhone 13. Mini. Mini. Yeah. It's not a Pro, not got the extra features, but yeah. it's still very good at what Correct. it does. Yeah. I don't know why I use the iPhone analogy, but I think well, it worked. It kind of works because the iPhone Pro's got three cameras and the oh, 13's there you go. only got two. Um, before we come on, I've got some other good questions for you, but before we do that, I think it'd be nice... Um, chance to take the opportunity to thank our viewers and your viewers should I say for the love and support on the new Sam Horsfield video it's gone down really it's well unbelievable it's had nearly 800,000 views now in a few days and if you've missed that video you need to go and check it out it's really well made you were very good at it Rick I think yes. you were very good you were hosting walking around the club just chilling but I think that's really, video ever but it was really good and Sam who is a PGA a European tour pro he's won twice in the European tour he's an absolute great lad as well wasn't he he's a really nice guy he played at the Marriott Worsley Park, so kind of Rick's home course, of normal white tees, and not the furthest back. We played on the white tees that you would turn up to on that day and play off. Let's see what Tour Pro shoots. On a, on a cold, wet day in Manchester. Real day, wasn't it? Like a proper, real golf day. Pulling his own bag. Yeah. Cleaning his own clubs. Yes. And he, in his own admission, he played terrible. Yeah. His own admission. He shot four under par. Four under par. And honestly, he, if he'd have had just... Another gear, he could have easily shot a 62. But he said towards the end he played like a 3 out of 10. Yeah. But you know what's mad? Obviously, I was the chair making my, my chair today is horrendous, but he um, he said he didn't play very well. And obviously, I walked around and he didn't play well. If you went around there and shot, was it four under? I'd be like, mate, you've smashed it today. Yeah, and you would have yeah, played everything. well. I watched him and I was like, even though he shot four under par, I could tell he wasn't playing well. Yeah. It's hard to, but why? Why do you reckon that had, was? He had like five birdies one bogey his bogey was a little bit of a silly mistake the par three up the hill the 11th it's the wrong club wasn't it really? wrong club and then just didn't get up and down but is i think he didn't look like he played well because he really probably gave himself 10 birdie opportunities like yeah, not dead close true. but like make, somewhat makeable he didn't stiff anything like he didn't put anything like ridiculously close to the hole but he just gave himself a lot of opportunities to make birdie you yeah, know what was good actually it was nice to watch him play like that because when you did that video with Min Woo Lee and he shot like 900 at King's Barnes, 
It was almost too good. Yeah. It was literally just hunting flags from everywhere. Yeah. And he played that well that if you'd never seen a tour pro until then, you would almost have this misconception they play like that every time. They yeah. don't do that. Min Ru Lee, as amazing as he is, he doesn't play like that every time. Well, I know the conditions would have been different, but the Dunhill links this week, uh, Min Woo Lee shot 73. Yeah, well, there you go. At King's Barnes. So that just shows it's not how they play. Whereas when we played, well, when you played with Sam, that was more like him playing kind of normal. It was probably like a normal play- person getting like 33 stale, no, yeah. 32 stale points. Yeah. Oh, I've not played, or oh, maybe even less, I don't know. But he didn't play out of his skin at all, no. did he? He still shot four under par. What was also phenomenal, I mean, you know what the biggest thing was? The speed of the greens. Yeah. They they are used to playing greens that are outrageously fast. Well, that had two effects, didn't it? It meant that they couldn't hold the putts as easy, and they were getting too much spin, wasn't they, on the green? Yeah. So it was, the greens aren't obviously normal tour speed at Marriott. They, they were okay speed for a normal golf course, it was a bit drizzly, so that definitely made the greens wetter, where, again, maybe on a PGA Tour, they would have been squeezed, squeezed, yeah, whatever yeah. they call it. Squidgeed. Squidgeed. Squidged. <laughs> Squidged. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been dried off, and the greens would have been back to its normal speed. But, again, they were a bit slower than normal, a bit wet, and it just couldn't get the ball to the hole, yeah. which is crazy. You know it was mad, though, that borderline annoyed me, but I didn't anything about it there's nothing <laughs> that's why it's anything about it there's nothing I would have done but somebody commented on the video and they said something like James Robinson would destroy this guy about kind of our James Robinson that's been yeah. on tour and as obviously James is a good friend of yours good friend of mine we've seen him very soon um, it's a different level like James didn't, James did that video with us and played the package set and yeah. played out of his skin James was an amazing golfer in a European tour card I think for a year yeah, Sam's won twice on the European Tour. He's 109th in the world. Yeah, there's only 100. And also, that's somebody else coming saying, one of the best players in the world, laughing face. It's like, there's yeah. 108 guys on the planet better than him right now. Like, yes, he's... I don't. I think sometimes, because people might... Some people might not have heard of him, they don't quite realise he's won on the European Tour twice. Like, yeah. it's outrageous golfer. Yeah, he is, he's, he's unreal. And like I say, hopefully in a few years, he becomes a proper, proper household name as... as a lot of people, when we first made that video with Min Woo Lee, didn't really know who he was. Now, he's, you look at him on the European tour, he's a kind of a household name. Um, but yeah, it was pretty... The only thing I wish we'd done differently, in hindsight, I wish we'd gone to like a proper Muni. Well, that could be the next, that could be part two. Like a proper, proper, like... Not but a the, nice golf course. No, I, I think that would have been good, but equally, most a lot of our viewers play at normal golf courses. Yeah, there'll be I a lot who it. play at Muni's, well. Yeah. There'll be a lot. There'll be a lot who play at unbelievably exclusive courses. Yeah. But I'd imagine, without knowing for a fact, that most of the audience play at a kind of course similarish to Marriott. You know, I'd like to do that one. Have it like proper. He has his caddy and he turns up in a tour bag. That'd be good. But he plays like a dead short, fairly crappy golf course. But he is like he's he's in tournament mode. And they take a step further, it actually does four rounds. Because the first round, he might shoot three under, just yeah. getting his head, and he goes, right, I know that course now. I know on 12, I can go over those trees. Yeah. Like, he might shoot 59. It's ridiculous. Um, speaking of shooting 59, one guy <laughs> who has definitely got the potential to be doing that very soon, Bryson DeChambeau, he um, went to the World Long Drive Championship. It was, was the, it was the World Long Drive. It wasn't, was it that one that it normally is, yeah, though? Yeah, it's just because of one. COVID that it wasn't the same. They normally have, like, the stands, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it was the big one. I, I remember you asking me last week, is this the big one? I went, no, I don't think it I is. I didn't think it was. But it was right. because uh, Carl Barks went back to back and he got right. a big belt and yeah, it, it was that. the proper real deal. Well, he came seventh, I believe, Bryson, Yeah. which I must admit, I didn't think he was going to do. I thought he'd do well, but I didn't think he'd do anywhere near that well because these guys, they're not normal golfers, are no. they? The, the, the way they hit the golf ball is just... Oh, that swing I showed you. Yeah. There was Top a guy, scene. I was watching it live on YouTube and I, I just filmed it on my phone, but the guy like... I can't remember his name. It, it, it was slightly weirdly filmed. I would like to have been produced better. But his his like leg like swung back. His left leg swung back to his right leg as he took the club back. Mad. And then he, it was like a baseball type of action. Like if you're on a if you were hitting a baseball bat, it's crazy. Well, he got a, Bryson got a personal best ball speed of two hundred nineteen miles per hour. Now the only thing I don't know, I imagine, I think I know the answer. Is he used a forty-eight inch driver. I'm guessing. I believe so. Yeah. What ball was he using? Was it like a Volvic? I think it's a Volvic. Because that's like the tournament ball. He came seventh. His what was his best drive actually in the final bit? Was like three late threes. Was it three nine one? Was his best one four seventeen? He had a four seventeen in because of different heats. I didn't yeah. massively watch. I saw clips on YouTube. And it, it very much depends on the wind. 
Yes. Like sometimes they've got a headwind or a tailwind, it makes a massive difference. like 390 difference. could win one round, was then 420 could win the next. Yeah. So I think the 422 is what um, Kyle Berkshire got, who's obviously the world champion and he's a good friend of Bryson's. But it, it's, it just shows that what's what's mad here is he's played, he's one of the best golfers in the world, doing it on the PJ Tour, Ryder Cup. But he's also mixing these guys at the biggest stage in long drive. Yeah. Like to do that, because normally if you're a lot like Rory, isn't anything like as long as these guys. No. And these guys can't play anything, any golf like Rory. Because no. you think like they'd be good in a golf course, but they ha- they're that many out of bounds and stuff. Yeah. They, I don't know how, what they would shoot. That'd be a good video. But nothing like tour standard. No. Supposed to be on tour, I imagine. How is Bryson doing both? Yeah. He'll be, he'll be entering the mini golf challenge championship next. I'll tell you what, though, I honestly, I know you had the thing about the four shouts, so he doesn't shout four enough still, which is a bit frustrating when you watch it. For me, I really believe that Bryson is doing a lot for the game at the moment. And also, right, I thought something the other day, this isn't revolutionary, but I was just driving, I had this random thought that, you know, we talk about growing the game. Yeah. I almost see it, I know it's a weird phrase, that some people like, some people don't, but I always thought of it as being like, getting more people into golf, like, now. So yeah. people that might be any age, get them into golf now. Then I looked at it in a different way and thought, it sounds bad. If nobody knew to took up golf today, then eventually golf would become extinct, yeah. wouldn't it? Because yeah. eventually, it sounds bad, everyone's playing golf will like, die at some point. So growing the game, it's not necessarily about getting new people who are... Not, not necessarily about getting people to start playing now to join us as such. It's about getting that flow of people constantly coming through the doors of golf and getting them excited into golf. Yeah. Now, why did you start playing golf? My mum got me into it. And what was your other reason? The person that you adored, you said that you wouldn't play golf if it wasn't for him. Uh, that almost coincided at the same time, though, in a weird way. But Ty, you said to me you wouldn't be where you are now without Tiger. No, well, that, that's true. I think Sam Horsfield said he's a massive fan of Tiger. Yeah. I am. There's no Tiger at the minute. No. So let's just say a kid who's 12 now, if mum gets him into golf, like a young Rick Shields. Who's that guy I know. that's making him? And I, I honestly think it's different. I'm not comparing Bryson to Tiger. Well, I am going to compare Bryson to Tiger, but for very different reasons. Tiger was this amazing golfer who's he doesn't seem real does he and i mean no, that in a, in a good, i mean i mean that in a complimentary way he, yeah. he, i also say it's like a robot not in a robot erotic manner but like you can't believe he's a real person yeah yeah i'm not suggesting bryson's like that just yet but bright if i was a young kid look at this guy who can drive the green on the par four opener at the Ryder cup and then go and play these events and be quite active on like youtube and social media yeah. i think people like bryson are what genuinely are going to excite that younger generation. Yeah, I know, I agree. I, th- there's lots and lots of things I like about Bryson. A few things I don't, but overall, is he, is he being good for golf? Well, y- yeah, he's kind of putting it, he's putting it out there to a different market. I might have said something different in the past, but right now, I do believe he's being he's good for golf right 100%. now. And I think the other thing as well is like, I think some people don't like him since the ball so far, which I don't really understand. The only way I would, if it was like a real life Happy Gilmore or some almost freak show comes on the on the tour who just hits it miles. But Bryson's worked for this, hasn't he? Yeah. He wasn't massively long. He was no. probably slightly above average, I imagine, but he wasn't like he is now. He's gone to the gym, he's done all this stuff, and it's working. How can you not admire that? I still can't believe that more people are trying to catch him. I think he's got so... F- I was thinking about this the other day. When he first started his training in lockdown last year yeah and he got absolutely massive he obviously did that at a really really good time yeah because nobody was seeing him and he could work really hard in the dark and get a massive advantage of over everybody else okay Mm -hmm. he then came out and was hitting the ball outrageously further now a lot of tour pros and people have admitted like rory then went on this journey of of trying to gain distance Mm -hmm. but bryson it it didn't instantly looked like it was going to work all the time like he wasn't winning every single tournament no he kind of had this like middle period where he was finding his grounds where he was hitting it a long way and obviously one was at the u.s open so obviously it did work but he wasn't winning every time and i think then a lot of these other players kind of went ah we won't bother then Mm. we don't need to catch this guy up and then bryson just slowly just gone whoosh like his distance has gone so far i don't think these guys can ever catch up now no, but the, playing, playing devil advocate on the other side of that, as much as, again, I think what he's doing is amazing. If he was like Tiger in the year 2000, I think more people would be think, thinking... If, so let's just say Bryson now and I run like Tiger's year, 2000, year, whatever, 2005, probably more would. 
But at the moment, Brighton's world number seven. So above him, we've got Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, Cantley, Marikawa, Dustin and John Rahm. And he isn't winning every week. I know, but what I'm saying... If it did, come oh, it, well, now, if it, yeah, if it, if, if, it, you know, if it did, if it did, then you think like you well, say, like, he's like two years ahead of everyone at that point, though. Well, yeah, but he is, but equally, he's still only, only world number seven. So, he's in a, you think, like, well, why does Justin Thomas doesn't do that? But, I'm, but I, what I'm saying at the moment, though, I still don't think it's clicked for him fully. Well, no, no, no maybe it, maybe it will. And it, like you said, maybe then he'll become world number one yeah. and he'll be miles ahead of everybody else. And everything thinking, crap, we need to do something about it. Yeah. But you do then also think, like, again, it's like an old man's this, but how much stress and strain he's putting his body through and how necessary is it all for those extra... Co- if, he, if he does loads more training for three more yards, which is massive, is that actually worth it on the PGA Tour? Mm. I don't know. Shall see. Well, I, know, I, I hope he goes on to... I, I love watching him. And I know when he's playing a tournament, I get excited to watch it. Yeah, I agree. I remember the, the Masters, the Autumn Masters in 2020... I couldn't wait to see his first tee shot. Yes. He teed off on the 10th and played a horrendous tee shot, but I couldn't wait to see that. I feel like we're going to keep talking about every week because there's always something to talk about, isn't there? But He's been labelled the content king. Well, yeah, he is. <laughs> that was good. Um, we've got some preparation to have. There was actually a few more questions, but I might save a few of them, maybe for the live show or just for the next couple of podcasts, but that was good. We need to actually, yeah, really get ready for this live show. There's 450 people going to be watching us. Oh, that's now. That's nothing. Don't worry, it's fine. Okay. Um, big thanks to everyone who's in the clubhouse. Yeah. If you're not in the clubhouse, you think, what is the clubhouse? Well, the clubhouse is a simple concept. If you've listened to every single episode of the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, you are in the clubhouse. It's a nice place to be. You've got... The only thing I don't like about the clubhouse is you, you'll be sat in there sometimes really chilled out and casual, just mind your own business. Sometimes um, reading a paper or smoking a cigar, because you're allowed to smoke cigars in the clubhouse if you want to. Uh, there's a separate little cigar room. Do you know about that? Have you ever been in? I don't like it. I want to ban it. Well, it's the side. It's loud. Mm. Um, but in the cigar room, anyway, you'd be sat there on a cigar, reading a, a paper. It's all quite relaxed and quite peaceful. And then Rick Shields walks through with all these trophies. He's got so <laughs> many trophies now. It's a bit noisy. All these clanking against each other. This is a dead, dead, dead weird one. I loved Sanders Shoffley until I saw him win the Ryder Cup. Why do you like him now? Big, his big fat cigar and he's like smoking in the press conference. He's smoking around yeah, people. Yeah, I don't really like cigars. I'm joking about that. Like, I didn't, I don't mind cigars. And if you, you're out and everyone's smoking a cigar, I get it. And I've done it in the past. <laughs> but like, the way he was doing it, it was like, he was around other people. He didn't want some, so It was just a bit like, smoke. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't like it. He got all these praises there. And again, you talk about like good for golf. Like, was that image good for golf? I don't think it was. But then equally, and I don't, agree, I agree with that. But people just love the images of John Daly smoking a cig on the course. Didn't they thought? I, it was dead, I didn't like that. But people thought it was dead cool. He's there smoking a cigar in the press conference, and he's like winking at. I'm like, I don't really like it. So should we ban is. cigars in the clubhouse then? Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. I'm not into cigars. I just thought it was quite a relaxed you know vibe. He, you know, he can smoke cigars Where? on the cigar putting green. Okay. And every, everyone out there. It, you have to smoke a cigar when you're on the cigar putting green. Yeah. But that's it. And you're not allowed to wink. You know what else I like about the cigar putting green? There's a little... I did say wink then as well. You're not allowed to wink on the putting green. <laughs> we have a separate room for that. There's a um, little, like, stash of little three Pro V1s. So when you want to go over, you don't have to take the balls with you just to put in green. You take your putter over. Four. four. Do you put with four golf balls? No, but you know, if it's going to make a pyramid, you've got to do four. Oh, okay, a little pyramid. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, so three and one. Three. Well, I spent three sat in a little triangle. Not necessarily oh, pyramid. Like okay, four there. Cherry on the top. Yeah, why's the end of the podcast? That was weird. <laughs> weird. Don't know how to end it. Just end it now. See ya.